In the last program I looked at, I used the gets function to get a string that was entered at the command line by the user. But it turns out there's a problem with gets. You see that gets will go right ahead and assign any amount of text, any number of characters that the user enters at the command prompt to the variable specified. Now here, for example, look in this program that we've just looked at, 0 to underscore test age. I've declared the age string variable with a maximum of 10 characters. So what happens if I run the program, but I enter 20 or 25 or 30 characters? Now, I want to clarify this problem. So the best way to do that is to look at this other program called 03 underscore get input. Now, in this program, gets tries to read in all the characters that have been entered at the command line but it only assigns a fixed number, five of those characters, to the fixed length array variable first name. And the same goes for last name, of course. Well, that's fine if I only enter four characters, with the fifth character being the carriage return, the new line character. But if I enter more than four characters, then I have a problem. That's because the data that I enter spills over the end of the memory block that's being used by this five character array variable. This variable can only hold that specified number of characters and any additional characters spill over and end up in some unpredictable area of my computer's memory. And the chances are that those extra characters will overwrite some bit of memory that's already being used for something else. So at best, that means that the data that I assign, the characters that I assign to my variables, may end up being incorrect because they may take on some of the overspilled characters. And at worst, it means that my program could actually crash. Well, let's see this in action so you can see for yourself. So I'll build and run my project. And here on the Mac, in fact, I get a warning already. It says this program uses gets, which is unsafe. You won't necessarily always get that warning, depending which compiler, which operating system you're using, but at least it tells me. So let me try this out. So I enter a small number of uh, characters that will easily fit into my five-character fixed-length uh, array variable. So Hugh, and I put my name as XXX. OK, it's so no problem there. Let me run it again. This time, I'll enter more characters. Well, I'll just put the numbers so we can see what's happening. So first name, I'm going to try to assign all those characters to it, but it can only hold five characters. And then the last name, I put some other characters here. But this time, you can see it's gone horribly wrong because the first variable now holds FG. Well, I'd expected it to hold the numeric characters that are entered. And the second variable is correct, but it's been unpredictable. And it's also given me a segmentation fault. Well, this is obviously not a desirable state of affairs. So how do I fix it? One simple fix is to use an alternative function called fgets instead of gets. And that's what I've done here. Let me just alter my code so that that function is the one that gets called. So I comment out this call to the function that used gets, and instead use the function that use, uses fgets. Now, fgets, as I said, is safer than gets. That's because it takes three arguments between parentheses. The first is the array variable to which the data, the characters, are going to be assigned. Then the maximum number of characters to be read. And the third argument is the name of the data source or stream from which those characters are going to be read. Well, the data source may be a file on disk, but alternatively, you can use the special identifier stdin, and that indicates that the source is the standard input. Here, that means any characters that are entered at the command line by the user. Now, the value specified for the maximum number of characters causes a string that's entered, the characters entered, to be truncated at the specified number, maximum number, minus 1. So let's assume that you enter the value 5 as the second argument, as here. Now, if you enter 5 characters at the command prompt, 
say A, B, C, D, E, only the first four characters, A, B, C, D, will be read. That's because the fifth character is a special null character, slash zero, that's automatically appended to a string. A null character marks the end of a string. And I'll have a lot more to say about strings and the way they're handled in C later in this course. Well, let's try this out and see how we get on this time. Build and run. Now, the problem I had before was when I entered more characters that could than could be accommodated by the array variables. Let's do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And this time it appears to work. It's been truncated, as I've said, at um, four visible characters for each of those two variables. So that seems fine. But there's still one problem. But if you look carefully at my code, you might notice that there's something else I've added here. This call to a, a function name, flush underscore input. Now what's going on there? This is a function that I've written specifically to deal with a problem which would otherwise occur. Let me show you what that problem would be. So this time I'll comment out the call to my flush underscore input function. And I'm going to use fgets just on its own. So the code is now equivalent to the code that I first ran up here, which prompted for input and used gets to get it. This code now prompts for input and uses fgets to get it. So I'm expecting that the fgets will get the first name and initialize it with five characters, then it will get the last name and initialize that with five characters. Am I right? Once again, I'll add more characters than can be contained in my variable. So I'm expecting it to get this and then prompt me for the next, but it doesn't. It gets the whole bunch and it assigns some characters to my first variable and some characters to my next variable, which is not what I was expecting. And that is why I've specifically had to add this extra function call here. So what's going on? I'll explain this in more detail in the next video.